Hello there, so since I made this second channel, my most requested video ever has been to do a bookshelf tour. And this is a democracy, so I will do what the people want. However, <laughs> what you may have failed to consider is that as a human being, I am a chaotic mess, and therefore my bookshelves are also kind of a chaotic mess. The main issue being that this is my family home, um, that's not the issue. This is where I kind of store all of my books from my degree and from my childhood, I guess, from when I was growing up. And then my flat in London, where I actually live, is um, kind of where I have all of my most recent purchases and the books that I'm sort of interested in at the moment. So I'm going to show you the books that I have here at my sort of childhood home. And I also kind of need to declutter them and get some books out of storage um, to read for certain videos. So really, this is actually quite helpful for me and is helping me do something that has been on my to-do list for, well, since Christmas. So <laughs> that's what this video is going to be. Welcome. Let's go to the bookcase. I mean, I say that as if it's not there, but like we'll pretend this is Homes Under the Hammer, okay? Just like how every good Christmas tree has a star on top, so does my bookcase. So this is a starlight that doesn't work. <laughs> I bought it in Primark like maybe six or seven years ago, but I think it's quite cool. So it's up there. And then um, behind that we have my degree, I haven't mentioned that in the last five minutes, so there's my degree. <laughs> and also a poster of Brighton, which really should go on the wall, but I haven't got around to doing that. And then this plant, which is faker than a Kardashian's face, um, <laughs> because I can't keep anything alive. We then have this fat edition of the complete works of Shakespeare, which is a cool thing to own, but is actually really impractical, because look how many pages there are. Completely impossible to use, really, but I had to have this for my Shakespeare module at university. This was the only thing we were allowed to take into the exam with us, so there you can see the plays that I'd marked out that I was thinking I might write about in my essays. Um, I actually, this was the best exam I ever did. I have never got a higher grade than the grade I got in this exam, which was a complete surprise to me and everyone who knows me. Above that we have In Search of Lost Time and then a book called Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. This is a must read book. Um, it's so important and yeah, a really thought provoking discussion about race um, specifically in Britain. So yeah, that is top of my bookshelf. Next let's do this shelf. So you may have noticed that some of the books are turned around and people find this infuriating. Like I have had threatening Instagram messages being like, what the hell dude, have some respect for the books. And I, I do, trust me, I do. But um, this is really just for storage. And so the books are actually, so there's like two columns of books here and then two here. So there's actually four piles of books within this one shelf because it's just for storage. So um, we're gonna get them out because why not? So we have A Christmas Memory by Truman Capote, Hamlet by Shakespeare, Say Something Back by Denise Riley, which is a poetry collection which uses so much medical jargon that it's just quite difficult to actually understand. You have to Google what is happening literally every five seconds, so wouldn't recommend. The Oxford Guide to Classical Literature. Um, I did a classics module in my first year. The Rape of the Lock by Alexander Pope. Metamorphosis by Ovid. As You Like It by Shakespeare. Shelley's Poetry. Um, King Richard II. Middlemarch, oh this is one of the ones I need to get out, um, by George Eliot. Haven't got around to reading this yet, but that is on my list for 2021. Howard's End by Ian Forster, such a great book, so quintessentially British. Um, oh, D. H. Lawrence, Sons and Lovers, also very, very British. Um, I actually read this in a tent in Thailand, um, where there was a snake outside the tent, and I was quivering inside the tent, reading this book and trying to survive. <laughs> Vile Bodies by Evelyn Waugh. If there was one book that I wish I had written, it's this one. I think it's incredible and um, it's kind of about like celebrity culture in the 1920s, 1930s kind of era. And um, I think it would be very interesting to sort of do a rewrite of that in terms of influencer culture and the new sort of celebrity culture. Um, food for thought, someone do that and credit me. <laughs> great Expectations by Charles Dickens is a book I had great expectations for and just didn't really enjoy. I'm just not a Dickens fan. Oh my lord, let's put that to one side. Do you see, do you see now the issue? Okay, we're just gonna try and pull the next selection out. Okay, so we have Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Oh, what's that cheeky boy up there? Four Quartets by T.S. Eliot. I nearly wrote my dissertation on T.S. Eliot, you know? Um, in fact, my original proposition uh, my proposal was to write about The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot, but I ended up changing it to Christopher Isherwood because I realised that I hated studying Eliot. <laughs> we then have King Henry IV Part Two. This is really making me realise that I should get all of my Shakespeare books kind of 
together. <laughs> then we have the poetry of Christina Rossetti, Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion. There are so many cultural references to Pygmalion, so this is a book that I would definitely recommend reading if you want to understand more kind of literary references in pop culture. Long Day's Journey into Night, heartbreaking. Homer's The Odyssey, again, such a, an important classic. If you want to understand a lot of um, references to mythology, specifically Greek mythology, then um, read Homer's Odyssey. Anne Frank's Diary of a Young Girl, um, Yeats's Poetry, Ford Maddox's Ford the Good Soldier, one of my favourite books that I read on my degree, um, as well as Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Graham Greene's Brighton Rock is a book I would love to turn into a TV show, Peaky Blinders style, um, because it's perfect for it. Um, it's kind of Peaky Blinders but set in Brighton and their kids, and I read this when I was working in China, and it was just a great reminder of home. And yeah, so it has a very special place in my heart. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, absolute classic. Oscar Wilde's The Decay of Lying and Other Essays. I really enjoyed this. Uh, this is the best way of reading kind of theory because Oscar Wilde puts them into a play. So he has kind of characters discussing the theories that he's proposing rather than writing kind of an essay. Followed by Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray, another one of my favourite books of all time. Um, what's that one? The Iliad by Homer, but upside down for some reason. And then Gisli's Saga and the Saga of the People of Eri, which is a book that I read for my module on uh, myths and epic of the north, um, which I ended up doing as a special topic module in my second year. Okay, that's another chunk down. This might actually be quite a long video. Oh my god, there's another! <gasps> Wait, there's actually three more sections in there. I have a problem. Okay, let's rattle through these. So we have the ecclesiastical history of the English-speaking Oh shit. This is the Ecclesiastical History of the English People, and this is by Bede, and I studied this book in the building next to Durham Cathedral, and Bede himself is buried in Durham Cathedral. How awesome is that? I mean, kind of weird and morbid, because he is obviously dead, but like, it was so cool reading his work and knowing that he was literally buried, like a hundred meters from where I was sitting in the classroom. The poetry of Sylvia Plath, um, the Bible. <laughs> Although I think I had more of a religious awakening reading Sylvia Plath's poetry. Um, anyway, then we have Ulysses by James Joyce. Why are these all the wrong way up? An introduction to Freud, um, Macbeth, Christopher and His Kind, and Mr. Norris Changes Trains, which were two books I wrote about in my dissertation. The Year of the Runaways. I think, why do I have two copies of that book? That's so dumb. Okay, sure. Um, it's not even that good a book. It's kind of about um, people immigrating to the UK, and it is interesting, but it's just so long and repetitive that I just got a bit bored of it. Then we have The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard. I fell asleep on a train reading this and ended up about an hour away from my destination. As in, I'd gone past my destination. It wasn't good. Um, then we have uh, Ethan From by Edith Wharton, Lucky Jim by Kingsley Amis, Flannery O'Connor's Wise Blood, and Iris Murdoch's Under the Net. Another one bites the dust. Okay, pile number four. Oh, this one has a kind of red vibe. We have The Memorial and All the Conspirators by Christopher Isherwood. These were his first two books, and they're kind of about his experience of the oppressive middle classes and their propriety in Britain. Um, he went to boarding school in the UK. And then Goodbye to Berlin, so this is when he'd moved to Berlin and then was about to move away again. Um, really awesome book. That's the book that inspired the film Cabaret with Liza Minnelli. The Kite Runner by Khaled Husseini, really awesome book. Uh, Gulliver's Travels, a must read. A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood is the book that made me want to study him and write my dissertation on him. And then Lines and Shadows, also by Christopher Isherwood. Wow, the Christopher Isherwood Foundation is really getting a lot of Pennies from me. <laughs> we then have Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Um, I recently read A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway and he talks about what it was like to actually know F. Scott Fitzgerald and it was so cool. So um, yeah, there's that. Then they have The Power by Naomi Alderman. This is a book that's been on my TBR for so long and I haven't got around to reading it yet, but I will at some point. <laughs> um, Toni Morrison's Beloved, what a book. Um, all about race and so, so brilliant. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Mark Twain said that he was the first person to ever typewrite a book, um, and this is that. Obviously, he didn't typewrite my copy, um, <laughs> but there it is. Lunch Poems by Frank O'Hara, love his poetry. Home Fire by Kamala Shamsi is one of the best books I read for my degree, it's so brilliant. Disgrace, Outline, Manhattan Transfer by John Dos Passos is an incredible book, it's kind of a montage of New York City. Um, and then Funny Boy by Shaim Salvadore is one of my favourite books of all time. How many times have I said that? It's quite an extensive list, but please read this book, it's so great. It's about um, sexuality and Sri Lankan politics, and it's just a great read. Um, okay. Next up we have 
the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. I was gifted this book, I haven't yet read it. Um, it's quite dusty. Lolita by Nabokov is one of the most disturbing books you will ever read, but um, a really interesting kind of psychoanalysis. Um, and again, um, absolute classic. Death of a Salesman, I studied for my A-levels. Um, absolutely loved it, and my girlfriend got me tickets to go and see it on in the West End um, in October 2019, and it was exquisite. So, so great. Where was I? The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter is a great selection of short stories. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. On Beauty by Zadie Smith. Daniel Defoe's A Journal of the Plague Year. Oop. James Baldwin's The Fire Next Time. Voltaire's Candide. The Eyes of Darkness and Lockdown are both books that claim to have predicted the coronavirus, but just absolutely didn't. Um, we have some Arthurian legend, we have Roxana by Defoe. Defoe it was kind of credited as being the father of the English novel, um, but I don't really enjoy his work at all. The Golden Notebook, The Underground Railroad and The World in the Evening by Christopher Isherwood. Honestly, it's the range for me. That is a real mix of stuff. I told you this would be chaotic. <laughs> okay, let's try and do the next shelf. So firstly we have another copy of The Year of the Runaways. Don't know why I have two of those, um, but I'll take one to a charity shop as soon as they reopen. Paradise Lost by John Milton, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, The Poetry of Thomas Hardy, that is a fat boy. Oh, why am I always fat shaming the books? Um, we then have The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. This is a narrative of um, a slave in America. Monica Ali's Brick Lane, Thomas Hardy's Jude the Obscure, Antony and Cleopatra by Shakespeare. Um, thinking Fast and Slow, this is kind of like a self-help book, weirdly sandwiched between two Shakespeare plays, um, because then we have Oh, Shakespeare's Poems. My Guru and His Disciple by Christopher Isherwood, Ale's Saga, and then The Tempest by Shakespeare. Next up we have The Duke and I by Julia Quinn, which is just absolute shite. Temples of Delight by Barbara Trapedo. Then Henry Fielding's Tom Jones. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. That is a great, great read. Another copy of Manhattan Transfer. I must just be so forgetful. Like, why have I got multiple copies of some of these books? Oh, maybe I've stolen that from the university library. Okay, I should... I should return that. Oh, what's this one hiding in here? Oh, Desiree's Baby by uh, Kate Chopin. The major works of Samuel Johnson, How Late It Was, How Late by James Kelman, Seamus Heaney's Poetry, Gravity's Rainbow by Pynchon, Dylan Thomas's Collected Poems, and what is this one at the bottom? The History of Sexuality by Foucault. Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, Dracula, The Pride of Miss Jean Brodie, Gone with the Wind, The Talented Mr. Ripley. Loved this book, really, really recommend. Robert Burns' is poetry, and um, this is the reason that in Scotland they have Burns Night. Um, Animal Farm by George Orwell, I read that during my GCSEs. Um, the Ambassadors by Henry James. Thomas Pynchon's The Cry of Lot 49. Irvine Welsh's Train Spotting, um, obviously inspired the very famous movie The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I was just obsessed with this when I studied at A-level, and I think that is why I ended up doing a literature degree. Orinoco by Afra Ben. Greyhounds for breakfast. Oh my god, I need to show you this. So I bought this from a charity shop and I went to read it because I had to study it for my degree and I opened up the first page and it's signed. It is signed by the author. That's crazy. I actually really hated the book, but I'm obviously going to keep it because it's signed. That's really cool. We have the major works of Alexander Pope and then I think this must be the final Christopher Isherwood book, but this is Kathleen and Frank, which is about his parents. Oh my goodness me. This is actually <laughs> More difficult than I thought it was going to be. Okay, I was wrong. There's another Christopher Isherwood book. This is Exhumations, which is just kind of like a selection of essays. Um, the House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. Rabbit Run by John Updike. Even War's Brideshead Revisited. If you're going to read some war, I would recommend Vile Bodies instead of this one. Alone in Berlin. The Let by Charlotte Bronte. The Spell Jar by Sylvia Plath. One of those books that is just essential reading. So incredibly written. All about mental health and femininity and... Beautiful. We then have Plato's Republic, T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, and Rupika's Milk and Honey. Maybe it's kind of sacrilegious to have Rupika and T.S. Eliot next to each other on a bookshelf, but that is the joy of this right here. Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey, Walt Whitman's Poetry, What Are You? Why is that font so hard to read? My little eyes cannot do that. What are you? Okay. 77 Dream Songs by John Berryman. Okay, I clearly have not read that one. And David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. This video is just me discovering how many books I have by Christopher Isherwood. So here's Proto Violet, another one of his works. Um, the Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Oh my gosh, this one is called My Name is a Book, an autobiography, and it's basically about the history of books being written. And oh, there's a little note from my um, housemate and best friend, um, Ella, and it says, you've got this. And this, um, 
she bought for me when I was writing my own book um, and I was having a bit of a slump, a bit of um, creative block and she bought this for me, which I think is so sweet and I obviously will be keeping that forever. 18th century women dramatists, Goodbye to Berlin by Christopher Isherwood, Down There on a Visit by Christopher Isherwood, I Have a Problem, Saturday Night and Sunday Morning by Alan Silito, uh, Close Range by Annie Prue, this is where Brokeback Mountain comes from, The White Tiger by Aravind Adiga, I think this has been made into a film on Netflix with Priyanka Chopra in it, so um, if you're interested, some really awesome um, Asian literature right here, and then Aurora Lee by Browning, London Assurance and Other Victorian Comedies, that sounds really boring. Women in Love by D.H. Lawrence, upside down for no apparent reason. <laughs> Peter Ackroyd by T.S. Eliot, The Hobbit by Tolkien, Wordsworth and Coleridge's Lyrical Ballads, The Rover by Aphra Ben, and then, oh, this book by John Osborne, what is it? My dog ate the cover of this. Oh, it's Look Back in Anger, and I, trust me, I was looking back in anger at that dog. It was such a nice cover, and it's now in tatters, so great. Okay, these were on the bottom shelf, and these are my little dinky books. So we have A Room of One's Own and Three Guineas, The Canterbury Tales, um, Romeo and Juliet, uh, Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence, A View from the Bridge and All My Sons by Arthur Miller, A Clockwork Orange, um, Christopher Marlowe's Complete Plays, Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse, The Poetry of the First World War, The Red Wheelbarrow, Goblin Market, and In Cold Blood. This is a great book, and we should all be feminists, because we absolutely should. Oh, and Beowulf. I somehow accidentally skipped Beowulf. They were here, and then these books were kind of wedged in, so we have A Christmas Carol, Little Women, and Moll Flanders. When I read this book, it was the first book I ever read for my degree, and I genuinely thought I'd chosen the wrong thing, because it was so difficult to read. Then we had the journals of Sylvia Plath, which my friend Gabby got me for my 21st birthday, a bigger edition of Little Women, um, The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad, Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. This is um, basically the prequel to Jane Eyre and really worth the read, um, kind of like more post-colonial analysis. Um, a book called Being an Adult by Lucy Tobin, still haven't cracked that one. Um, a historical guide to Emily Dickinson, um, a really beautiful edition of The Handmaid's Tale, which was gifted to me. Um, the Making of a Poem, which is just like an anthology. A student cookbook. A History of the English Language. Margaret Atwood's The Testament, which I detested. <laughs> There's a whole video on my main channel about why there just should not have been a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale, which is one of the best books ever. Um, and then Ted Hughes's new selected poems, right at the bottom where he belongs. Then we have Wuthering Heights, Americana by Chimamanda Adichie. Wow, what a book, that is incredible. Um, Midnight's Children, A Thousand Splendid Sons, which my grandmother lent me and I seem to have stolen. Um, the Tattooist of Auschwitz, um, Gilead, Bleak House, Emma by Jane Austen, which is my favourite Austen novel. A Choice of Anglo-Saxon Verse, The Colour Purple, that is incredible. Um, Julius Caesar, The God of Small Things, and The Hungry Tide. I would highly, highly, highly recommend these bottom two. They are wonderful books all about different people in India. Then the final selection of books on that shelf. This is going to infuriate you. This is meant to say The Hobbit. Um, why is it like that? Why, why are they in that order? I am really mad at that too, and I will be rectifying that immediately. We have The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce, um, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Can you see how destroyed this edition is? Because I read it so many times. Uh, the Pointless Book by Alfie Days. What the hell is that doing there? <laughs> um, then we have The Hobbit um, in that order for some reason. <laughs> the Poetic Edda, um, The Prose Edda, um, The Collected Stories of Catherine Mansfield, the Two Gentlemen of Verona and Neil Gaiman's American Gods. American Gods basically um, brings together mythology from loads of different countries and cultures, chucks it all in a blender and imagines a world where all of the gods exist and are fighting for relevancy against technology. And it's really, really wonderful. Plot twist, there's another whole bookshelf. <laughs> and these are basically books that I had before I went to uni. Small Island by Andrew Levy of Mice and Men and Educating Rita. These are books that I studied for my GCSEs and actually I once went on a night out with Of Mice and Men. In my first week of uni, we had to dress up as our subject. So I wore a t-shirt that said, it's lit, and then on the back it said English lit in brackets, and I carried Of Mice and Men with me all night. Auden and Isherwood, The Berlin Years, which I really need to return to Durham University, whoops. Then we have my own book, and this is cool because this is the um, first proof I had where it's just a kind of mock-up. And what's funny is that here it looks like my book, but then when you look inside, it's actually a book about cats, and it's just my cover kind of stuck onto this book. So that was just basically a mock-up so that I could show what the book would look like in a, a YouTube video. I nearly said a music video then, who do I think I 
I am. There's this plant here, which every time I come home starts to die, and then when I go back to my flat in London, my mum kind of resuscitates it um, and does a much better job of looking after it than I do. Below that we have The Perks of Being a Wallflower and Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy, another copy of The Tattooist of Auschwitz for some reason, uh, Sophie's Choice, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, The Reader. This book is called Hitler's Willing Executioners and it's basically a historiography book that I analysed for my history A-level, not a book that I agree with in the slightest. It's actually completely terrible and I wrote, I wrote about 3,000 words about why it was terrible. Um, White Teeth by Zadie Smith, The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, which is a book that has been banned so many times throughout its kind of history. We have another Mark Twain book, this time The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Harvest by Jim Crace, which I wrote my A-levels on. Life of Pi, um, Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. This is a random kind of bingeable box set of penguin um, short stories. Eats, Shoots and Leaves, I think that's a book about grammar, because I'm really fun, apparently. Um, Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut is great, but what's better is the audiobook version where James Franco narrates it. Very strange book, but really cool. Um, Wonder, Nick Hornby, A Long Way Down, and then this book, which is kind of like a jokey one, called F in Exams. On the next shelf we have a collection of Shakespeare's sonnets that I bought in Stratford-upon-Avon, where Shakespeare grew up, which is very, very cool. The Inheritance of Loss, Meditation and Mindfulness. Um, I don't know why I own that, because I'm not very mindful, I don't think. <laughs> um, the Fall of the... Does that say nonce? What, what does that say? I don't know, it's by Edgar Allan Poe, clearly I haven't read it. <laughs> then we have Vanity Fair, The Kindness Journal by my lovely friend Ruby Granger, a big ass book of theory and criticism, and another cool edition of The Handmaid's Tale. Then we have The Accidental Death of an Anarchist, which is what I did my GCSE drama performance on, um, and it was great fun. I played a madman. Elephants on Acid and Other Bizarre Experiments, uh, okay. I remember really loving that when I actually read it. Um, the Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out of the Window and Disappeared, Fatherland, The Bees, Paper Towns by John Green, everyone, I think, who is of my generation, has some John Green on their bookshelf. The Past by Tessa Hadley, The Valley of Fear by Arthur Conan Doyle, The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro, and this was another one of my A-level English texts. Stephen Fry's Mythos, if you're interested in Greek mythology, you will love this. Um, Stephen Fry presents it in such a an understandable and approachable way. A Study in Scarlet, the first Sherlock Holmes book, The Kite Rider, The Rosie Project, The Pickwick Papers, The Grapes of Wrath, Fighting on the Home Front, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Oliver Twist, Pride and Prejudice, The Curious Instant of the Dog in the Nighttime. Again, I went to see this on the West End and it was awesome. The Rivers Met on a Wooden Plain and Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers. Just below that we have my files which have all of my A-level notes in. This one is upside down and it annoys so many people when they see it in the background of my videos, but I am too scared to move this because everything is inevitably going to fall out and I just... I don't think I'm mentally strong enough to deal with that right now, so it's staying there for the time being, sorry. Oh my god, I've just bent down to go to the final shelf and there's a kind of gin and tonic down here. Fantastic. We is the kind of original dystopia, so this is kind of where 1984 and all of those books sort of derive from. The Salmon Who Dared to Leap Higher, Good Night Mr. Tom. I really hated this book. Um, I don't know why. As a kid, I just really didn't like it. <laughs> Quidditch Through the Ages by She Who Must Not Be Named, The Girl Who Saved the King of Sweden, another book by her, um, Looking for Alaska by John Green, All the Light We Cannot See, Look Who's Back, the original Hunger Games trilogy, um, One Day by David Nichols, and then an English and Latin dictionary. And that, I think, concludes the bookshelf tour. There's also loads of stacks of books just all over the place, but <laughs> we're not gonna get into that now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sorry it was a hot mess, but I hope that you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel down below if you want, and I'll see you next time. Bye!